Come on, old man. Hey. I'm out of condition. I'm saying nothing. Just the last time we did this, I was actually sick trying to keep up with you. Knife's needle, we never climbed that, did we? Still got all the gear in the shed. All right. When we get back, I'm going to put a date in the diary. Huh? Deal? Deal. Good. Last one to the top buys the beers. No. Come on. down and cutting back and last in first out I guess but I'm sure it's got nothing to do with you right okay my solicitor rang yesterday apparently one of the tabloids is still sniffing around Dave I really don't need I need the money Phil I need the money to fight the case to buy the kids the basics to live Chances of me getting a job around here, zero. And you've worked yourself to the bone oh, for no, me. No, no, no. I'm going to make good. I'm going to meet the guy. Truth is, David's right. No. Yeah. We can't stop Jack going now. He's a teenage boy. The more we try, the more we resist us. I also think we've got more important things to worry about. What more important than keeping our families together? I think we need to get you a lawyer. Which do you think I need help, do you, to cover my tracks? Look, I don't need a lawyer, Rob, because I have done nothing wrong. So I'm going to do the interview, I'm going to tell the truth, and then I'm going to get on with being a parent. Hi, guys. You seem to do Hudson right anyway. Um, think she's in with Hillman? Thanks. Jack's 16 in a few weeks, right? He's almost taller than Rob. He can look after himself, can't he? But you can't, Rob. So I really need you to listen to me here, please. Three juries have failed to find your father not guilty. 36 men and women have listened to the evidence in three trials over seven years, and not one of them, darling, not one of them have been able to say the words, not guilty. 
And as much as I really understand your confusion right now, I really do. That scares me. It really does. If it were one or two genuine mistakes, perhaps we could find a way around it. Sir. But this is way more than that. In fact, the evidence brought to me by D.I. Hudson strongly suggests your initial investigation wasn't just flawed, but also perhaps criminally negligent. With respect, sir. You will have the opportunity to answer the allegations made against you in due course, DCI Beach. But right now, I'm informing you that I am suspending you from duties and I have forwarded the details regarding this allegation to professional standards. The evidence against Collins remains, and I have no doubt I expect in them time... to serve you with a Reg 15 notice. You will then have 10 days to respond in writing to the allegations made against you. The right to consult a Federation representative and see to go nowhere near my kids, okay? Which we wouldn't anyway. We know what they've been through already. And actually, what Sun Readers are mainly interested in is your story, what you've been through, how you're moving forward. And how long would this go on for? We think three Saturdays. We always do a weekend personal interest story, and we're thinking prison years, the retrial and release, and then the future. These true life crime stories play very well now with all the stuff on telly coming over from America. And for all of this, how much would you pay me? I've been authorised to offer you £10,000, David. I was hoping for more than that. Hmm. I need more than that. Maybe if we'd done it immediately after the trial collapsed, but that's the best I can do, I'm afraid. Would you go to 15? I'm really sorry. 13, then? Please. I've got lawyer's fees and I owe my brother money and I need to buy the kids' stuff. Please. I can go to 12. If we start right now, here, see if we can get it in for this weekend. For 12. OK. Gonna need a couple of signatures. I'm still scared of him, you know. Mum. Alice. You know, I heard her and Rob the other night. Police were asking questions about where she was the night Mum died. No. They've spoken to her once already, and now she has to go back in again. What do they think? I don't know. But Rob is really freaked out by it. They don't think she... I don't know. I don't know. And, Ro, I wasn't going to say anything. It's just, if she's telling you shit like she's scared of our dad and trying to come between you and me. Right now, I trust him a lot more than I trust her. to ask possibly a difficult question for you to answer but I want to qualify it by saying that any investigation is as much about eliminating possibilities as it is about finding them okay right did your wife ever express any concerns about her sister what sort of concerns 
Do you ever say anything to suggest that she was scared of her? Physically scared of her? Are you being serious? Did she? As much as I would love to say yes. No. They had a fiery relationship, but they were sisters. You know, but I never got any sense that she thought that Alice would actually hurt her. Okay. Right, why do you ask? What if you found out? Um, I can't disclose any more information. Hey, no, no, at no, this no, time. no, 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 no. She has my children. Yeah, no, I understand that. But I've told you everything I can at this stage. Thank you very much. Do you have any kids, Kathy? Run. Boy or a girl? A boy. Right. And if you found out that he was in any kind of danger, then you would have to know, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? You'd have to know. So. I think Alice has brought them up very well for seven years. And I'm sure that they're completely safe. <laughs> I've asked Alice Moffat for a minute-by-minute -minute timeline of where she was from leaving Tara at 9.55 to approximately 8 the next morning. And, Graham, can you do a full sweep on her? See if she had any previous history, cautions, bind-overs, parking tickets, anything at all? Yeah. Well, are we seriously now suggesting she's a possible suspect? She was jealous of what her sister had, the career, the kids, and she owed her nearly £20,000, which she couldn't pay back. Yes, she's a suspect. As indeed is Tom Wilson. He's now confessed to being in a troubled relationship with Tara. And we know that on more than one occasion they fought. The question is, did it ever spill over into anything more? Steve, let's go back over his movements that night. Look through all the original CCTV footage and all the original witness statements, please. Go. And then lastly, David Collins. The most damning evidence against him has always been his wife's blood on his coat. His defence convinced the jury that cross-contamination was a possible reason. Was it a likely one? Mary Lou's, you speak to the lab again. OK, that's it. Thanks, guys. What happened with DCI Beach, Gov? We already got served with a Red 15 yesterday. Uh, Red 15s are signed off by the head of PSU. I don't know anything about that. But I was asked to give an update on the investigation, how it's moved on, which I did. The idiot actually got nailed for destroying government property because he shredded everything when he knew SMU were onto him. And how compromised were his methods? How about very fucking compromised? So what was he actually doing or not doing? <sighs> everything. Buying cheap materials, invoicing for government standard and pocketing the difference, reusing disposable Petri dishes. His cleaning and log protocols were totally chaotic. And he really did shred everything. We have no records I can look at at all. Why else do you think Collins got off? OK. So is coat. Run it through testing again. Have you got any idea how many times that coat's been looked at? I'll want it done again. The blood was clearly in a spatter pattern. That was never cross-contamination. ASAP. Please. So what else am I looking for? Everything. Hair, sweat, skin, fibres, foreign debris. Anything, everything. I told the original officer all that. Nothing's changed. So you got home about 10.15, you had a cup of tea and went to bed at about 11. And then you woke up at about 9, just before getting the bus to work, arriving slightly late, just after 10. Yes. And we have a record of one last call to Tara's mobile. This one at 10.27 from your landline. Yes. Which she didn't answer. No. And you didn't leave a message. I went through all this seven years ago. And this call suggests that you couldn't have been anywhere near Hailsham at that time? No. And Rob was at home when you got back? Yes. And he'll corroborate these times? Yes. Can you tell me then why your car was clocked by a speed camera doing 57 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone halfway between your house and Tara's at 10.26 that night? What? We've just learned that your car was photographed speeding at 10.26 on the B3307. Well, I know. I don't... 
I don't know. Could it have been you driving? No, I'd been drinking. I don't no, it wasn't me. Did anyone apart from your husband have access to your car? No. Did you report it stolen? No. So it must have been Rob. Well, I, I don't know. Except you said in your original statement and just now to us that he was with you all night. Could he have taken the car without you realising? I suppose it's possible. Yeah. And can I ask then if when you came in you told him about the row you did? I don't it? remember specifically. It was seven years ago. But I... I imagine I would have done yes. And obviously he knew about the money you'd borrowed from her and not yes. yet paid back. What time did you say you work again, sorry? About nine. And he was in the house then? Yes, definitely. Are you sure, Alice? You've already given us several very different accounts of your movements that night. Yeah, he was there. He was there, I promise. Good neck as well. Oh, Dave, no. No, look, no. that's a fraction of what I owe you, all right? So please, come on, it makes me feel better. All right? For me. Didn't take long, did it? What well, didn't? Me taking handouts from you. Yeah. Normal service, eh? What are you up to? To give my lawyer money and then to tell him that Alice Moffat is now a suspect. Yeah. Should make things interesting, eh? Well, no one wants to charge me of anything. No one's accusing me of anything. I'm not being re-interviewed. I made a terrible mistake having an affair with Tara, and I'll never stop feeling shitty about what my selfishness cost my kids. But that was eight years ago, Mel. And that's not who I am now. I'm... So please come back home and let me prove I can be a better father to our child. Please. Well, according to my notes, you were flagged from a door to door as having possible useful information, but it was never followed up. Not me. It was my wife they spoke to. Right. Um, well, it looks like we've got Mr. Annabeo here, sorry. Um, can you remember what information it was she had, sir? She saw someone that night. Walking away from the direction of Collins' house. We only live a hundred yards or so from them. Right. Uh, is your wife around? She's, she's at work, but I can get her to call you later. Yeah, that'd be great. Let me give you my direct line. It's on there. So, which do you want me to concentrate on? The house or the kids? The kids, obviously. Because I defy any court in the world to think they're safer with them now than with me. OK. Right. And then when we do get the kids, which we will, I want you to go after their house. I'm practically homeless. Let's see how they fucking like it. No worries. Yeah, I'll see you then. He's really sorry, mate, but he's not going to be back for a while. He's had to go to town short notice. Why? Uh, following up on some work possibilities, I think. Fine. I mean, you, you're very welcome to wait. It's fine. I'll come back tomorrow. I used to see it, you know. When you used to watch us in the park. And there was me thinking I had a future in special ops. I always wanted to come visit after you moved down. If 
felt unfair that you got caught up in everything. But Mum, Alice, thought it'd be confusing for us. Well, I'm sure she didn't make the decision lightly. Look, I know things got really messy after your mum died. But I think Alice is basically a good person. Don't you? Whatever happened to Auntie Gemma? <laughs> you guys were down from Bolton, used to babysit us. Bring us donuts. We liked Auntie Gem. <laughs> yeah, she, she went back to live with her folks in Burnley. Why? Oh, you know, it was, it was hard after the trial. It was hard for everyone. How could you actually have gone to Hillman? You shouldn't be here. How could you do that to me? I didn't do anything to you. You did it yourself. You ignored key evidence. You failed to make a full disclosure. And you lied, Will. I loved you so much. Oh, yeah, yeah. You loved me so much that you did everything you could to manipulate me into protecting you. And I loved you. And Jacob loved you. And you betrayed us both. So that's what this is, revenge. Isn't because I'm like you. I don't let my personal life interfere with my work. Oh yeah. Listen, listen. fuck, Will. You're drunk. Go home. Don't come here again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just just want to show you this. I'm guessing you're not found it yet. It was only introduced pre-sentencing. The truth, Kath. My methods may leave a little bit to be desired, but the truth, I've always had a nose for the truth, and I think you know that. And deep down, I think you still know it was Collins. Collins' girlfriend never pressed charges, and the caution's long since spent. How long were they together? Two years. Proper relationship. Jesus. Yeah. So, I want us to try and track her down, get her side of things, because, uh, If Collins did do that, that's a history of domestic violence, and that is not good. Hang on a minute. Am I under arrest? No, no, not at the moment. This would be a voluntary interview relating to questions we have following our interview with your wife. But I am going to caution you. What have you said, love? I haven't said anything, sweetheart, I swear. I can tell you that you don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. OK. If I want to do this here, can we do it at the station, please? Of course. After you. Rosie? Rosie? Rosie, what's happening? Nothing, darling. Everything's fine. Did Dad... Did Rob do something wrong? Dad did nothing wrong. So why are they taking him, I just want to ask him a few questions, darling. It's really fine. Some questions like what? Rosie, I'm really tired and stressed. Can you just... Did you? Did I what? Did you do something bad? Something bad like what? You hurt my mother. No, I did not hurt your sainted mother, but my God, she hurt me every day of our life. Rosie, Rosie, please. Huh? Rosie, no. Rosie, sorry, sorry, Rosie, please. Huh?
Yes, it was me driving the car. OK. Where are you heading? Uh, I was looking for a late-night chemist. There's one in Exminster. OK. For what? Alice had been on uh, antidepressants for some time since the IVF problems we'd had, and uh, she'd run out a few days before. She had a new prescription, but she hadn't picked it up. And when she got back that night, she was crying, uh, upset, she was very low, and I decided to see if I could pick up her medication. At 10.30 at night? Yes. So what difference would it have made going in the morning? Antidepressants can take weeks to get into your system. Yeah, I know. But I wanted to get out as well. We'd, uh, we'd rowed, and I wanted some time to think. Rowed about what? Tara, how to deal with her behavior. I wanted to cut her off for good, but Alice would never contemplate that. Would it be fair to say that you didn't like Tara? No, it wouldn't be fair to say that at all. It would be fair to say that I hated her for the pain she caused my wife. Did you get the prescription? No. No, the chemist closed at 11. I got there about five past. That would have been while I was speeding. Right. I don't have a map in front of me, obviously, but am I right in thinking that to get from where you were then living to Exminster, you would have had to pass through Hailsham? Yes. And the camera snapped you in Slinfield. How many miles is that before Hailsham, would you say? About two, three? Yeah, about that. So Tara's train gets in at 10.35 few minutes to get off the platform, down onto the road, let's say 10.40. Would you say that was about the time you were passing through? Yes. Did you see her? Sadly not, otherwise she might still be alive. Yeah, absolutely certain. Absolutely. You work at a boatyard, don't you? Yes. What do you do there, specifically? Uh, anything and everything. You work with ropes? Yes, sometimes. Do you know what a butterfly knot is? Yeah, of course. OK. Thank you so much for your time. Andy, how's tricks? Yeah, all good. You? Yeah, I can't complain. Listen, mate, I'm going to cut straight to the chase. You know I'm doing a couple of days a week at the Farnbrook Clinic? Yeah, yeah. So you never heard this from me, but... I've just seen Melissa in reception. Oh, stop her, Andy. I I'm on my way. Just... just stop her. Gov. I've just spoken to an old witness that was never followed up. Yeah? So she lives on the same road as the Collins. And on the night of the murder... As she was arriving home, she saw Tom Wilson walking away from the Collins' house. Right, yeah. We know this. No, no, it's not that. It's the timing. She says it was definitely around 11.30. What makes her so sure? She was working at Anderson's, the meatpacking place, doing shift work. The late she finishes at 11, it took her 10 minutes to get out. It's a 20-minute walk home. And she's absolutely certain it was him? He was her obstetrician for both her kids. Paul Wilson in again, yeah? I have told you several times now, oh, sir. I just want to speak to her. It's my child as well. She's my wife. I have a right to speak to my own wife, don't I? Not if she doesn't want to speak to you, no. Now, please, do yourself a favor and walk away, or I will call the police. <sighs> fine, fine, I'm going, fine. Oh. 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 You twat. Oh. Oh. They came and took Dad away, and and Mum started shouting at me, and I I just had to get out of there. Yeah. 
Said you want to go say hello. You're fine. Rosie, this is Dad. Hello, Rosie. It's lovely to see you. Well, you must be nervous, I know I am. I'm going to go get some drinks, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Um... Should we sit down? I'm going to say a couple of things, Rosie, and then... And then I'll shut up. <laughs> OK. Firstly... I loved your mum so much. I would never have heard a hair on her head. And I... I was just as devastated as you were when she died. And secondly, I just... I just wanted to tell you, in case you didn't know, that... that not a, a single hour went by when... I didn't think about you and Jack. I missed you both so much. And I love you both from the bottom of my heart. And whatever happens between us, I will always, always love you. I... I didn't think I'd remember anything about you, but I do. What do you remember? Your smell. Soap and jumpers. <laughs> Here we go. This is for you. This is for you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks so much for your help. Right, that was Collins's girlfriend. When they were students, they were in a boozer, both very drunk, and she swears blind it was actually her hitting Collins. So why did he get the caution? The arresting officer didn't believe her, thought she was scared of him. Right. And the officer told Collins that if he didn't accept the caution, he'd charge him. Okay, good work. invited me around to play poker and he was really weird with me really odd and I just I thought that he must know and that he was sort of testing me and then later that night
she was murdered. And obviously he was a suspect. Except then um, someone in town said that they that the milkman had um, had seen him at five thirty. And I realized he couldn't have done it. He couldn't have got her body all the way out to Dedham and then got back again by 5.30 if I had been with him until 11.30. So? So. I changed my timing slightly to keep him in custody so that he wouldn't say anything to my wife about me in town. Oh, I never thought it would be that important. I never thought he'd have to be convicted. I, mean, I was just trying to buy a little time. <laughs> and, then the, and then the evidence came out about the blood. And I thought, okay, maybe he did do it. I mean, maybe he didn't go all the way out to Dedham that night. Maybe he didn't put her there until a few days later. He's but... being watched 24 hours a day. You're a smart man. You'd have known that. I just... The longer it went on, the more scared I became. <laughs> I couldn't find a way out. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm truly, I'm truly sorry. At that time, your house was on the other side of the station, wasn't it? She got off the train at 10.35. I didn't go past the station for at least an hour. Well, she was drunk. She might have passed out somewhere. She might have been sick. She might have met someone. We don't know what happened to her. I swear I did not kill her. But we do know that she wasn't at her house, don't we? Yeah, she wasn't at her house. And we do know that you would clearly have stopped at nothing to conceal your affair. I didn't kill her. No. Did you actually say you thought it was me who killed her? No, of course her? I didn't. They just asked me who was driving the car and I was shocked. Because I didn't even know you'd gone out. Because you were passed out. A fairly regular occurrence at that time. Well, why didn't you tell me in the morning? Well, I don't know, for I God. didn't even need my pills that well, night. I thought you did, sorry. So what else did you think I needed, Rob? What else did you think you should do for me? Certainly. You tell me. I'm not the one who attacked her. I did not attack her. Listen, they told me some of the things you said in the text. I was angry and drunk. Yeah? Well, they scared me, and you know what? I don't blame the kids for wanting to go back no, to their daddy. No, no, He's a safe about the living here. said that! You just more or less accused me of killing your sister. Okay, so, sorry, say again what the flakes contained. Uh, dibutyl phthalate, camphor, and ferric ferrocyanide. How was this not found before? Just more sophisticated tests available now. And so, ferrocyanide, I mean, what is that? Sounds like some sort of poison to me. No, no, not a poison. None of them are poisons. They're just some of the ingredients of a very everyday compound. What we found in both pockets of the coat are trace elements of a woman's nail varnish. One second. Yeah, Hudson. Gov is me. Say all that again to my governor. The time you and Tara fought, you said it was in an alley by the hospital. Uh, so, yeah. Was this at night? Yeah. Late? Um, after a shift, about 10. And this was February 12th, if you say so. So it was cold, I guess. Was it dry, raining, snowing? Oh, God, I don't know. It's seven and a half years ago. What was she wearing? <sighs> it's, um... One of those, uh... You know, kind of parka with a, with a, with a fur-lined hood. She was kind of swamped in it, like a... Great, thanks. 
It was minus three on February the 12th, 2009. So it's freezing cold. Tara can't find her coat or hers isn't warm enough, so she grabs her husband's on the way out. I do it all the time. And that's why her blood was on it. Not from her murder, but from when Tom Wilson hit her three months before. She's wearing David's coat. Hi. So sorry to disturb you so late. That's no, fine. I've got some news. Yeah, should we go back? Yeah, that's fine. What news? We believe we found evidence which conclusively exonerates you. If you'd like to come down to the station tomorrow, I can go through it all with you right. in detail. But we now believe that your wife borrowed your coat several months before she died, and the blood on it was from then from an encounter with Tom Wilson. We also now know that he was at your house until 11.30, which, which obviously supports your original alibi. OK, OK, OK. Uh... I'm so sorry, David. I'm so sorry for everything you've been through. <sighs> 